Howdy, y'all. Welcome to Mosquito Springs, Texas. Grab you something cold to drink and come set a spell. Bobby Ray and Winston's got some really big news they want to share with us today. So what you got for us, Bobby Ray? Hey, Big D. You know, there's been an awful lot of news lately about people getting on up in space, and it's getting everybody all kinds of excited. Yes, it is. You know, you got Jeff Bezos and old Muskie, and then that there Richard Branson with all of his virgins in space. At least we know he won't be lonely. <laughs> I tell you what. Well, Big D, uh, me and Winston are going to prove you don't need to be a bajillionaire to go into space. <laughs> well, now, how y'all going to do that? It's going to be really way out, man. I mean, way out. Yeah, after all, Andy Griffith had a salvage yard and built a rocket from spare parts and salvaged space junk that was left on the moon. Oh, Bobby Ray, that was just an actor in a movie. Yeah, that's what they want you to think. No, me and Andy uh, used to go fishing a lot, and he'd talk about that uh, salvage one rocket that he had and the stuff he brought back from the moon all the time. Oh, brother. No, no, it's true. Salvaging all that space junk's how he could afford to go to law school and become a famous lawyer in Atlanta. <laughs> That's right. Oh, you need to get out more. Oh, man. That's what we're going to be doing. We're going to be getting out way out. Big time. That's right. So let me get this straight. Y'all got out there and built y'all a rocket out of salvage parts. Right? He better than that. We got a real live, ready made alien spacecraft. Now, how is that possible? Well, see, Winston was uh, out digging a stock tank for his llamas with a backhoe. Right, Winston? Yeah, right, right. Huh? You remember Maybob, Trixie Moonshine, the other llamas? <laughs> oh, yeah, right. Uh, hey, you know llamas are really celestial beings, man. That's why they're so super chill all the time. Well, except for the spitting part. <laughs> I know, that's right. Anywho, uh, Winston ran into something really big in the dirt. I did, man? Well, that's what you told me, remember? Oh, yeah, man, that's right, I did. Well, see, I, I got off my hole, <laughs> and I got some of my friends to come over and help me find out what was buried there. Yeah, I made some infused tea and fresh brownies for all the group that uh, came over to help, man. So what'd you find? You mean I found something? Hey, Bobby Ray, Big D said I found something, man. No, tell him what you found when you and your buddies were digging. Oh, yeah, man, that's right. Well, see, I invited a bunch of people over... And I, like, made some infused tea and some brownies. I think I'm starting to feel a little bit of deja vu right here. <laughs> so we got all the dirt off the top part of it, man. And, uh, there was, like, this hatch thing. It was just really cool, kind of circular. So, so we, we knocked on the door, but nobody answered it, man. So we figured, well, why don't we just go in and see if anybody's home? So I got uh, one of the llamas to uh, knock first, man, just in case it was more llama-friendly than human-friendly, but it wasn't, he didn't answer the door either. So I decided I'd go ahead and uh, open the door myself. Well, did anything happen? Well, not at first, because we were kind of pulling, you know, and it wouldn't really go anywhere. So I guess it was stuck after being in the dirt for so long. So I got a couple of my other buddies together, and I asked them to go ahead and put their hands on there and pull it up real hard with me. And after they stopped laughing, they finally came over and pulled on it. And we just kept pulling and pulling. Pulling. And and then finally, finally, it whoosh, just opened right up, man. We all fell over and stuff, you know, because cause we just were pulling so hard, man. Anyway, it was like this really stinky stink, man, that was just kind of coming up from it when we opened the door up. Well, I thought one of the guys had really cut a big one, man. You know, because it was like really bad, stinky cheese feet in there. 
but nobody would admit to that one. And I like checked my pants too, and everything was good there, so he knew it was actually coming from the ship itself. So me and a couple of buds, we decided to look down in there, you know, and and we started going down in it because there was like a ladder thing that you could go down in, man. So that's what we did. Yeah. Well, to make a short story long, his other buddies kind of got uh, tired a bit and fell over. And uh, he gave me a call on the telephone and I came on over to see what was shaking. Well, he, he showed me down inside that thing, and we started going on down into it. Oh, my, it was just something else. It looked really tiny on the outside, but on the inside, it was really big. Sort of like going into a dog house and coming out the other side into a palatial mansion, but not quite so big. Well, that's kind of weird being bigger on the inside. That's right. Well, we got on down in there, and uh, we found that uh, control board and the pilot seats and stuff like that. And that little alien sitting in the pilot seat there, he must have been uh, freeze-dried or disintegrated or something like that, because he looked like a big old pile of orange tang. Yes, he did. Wasn't a whole lot left of him but that suit there, so... uh, Maybe it was the suit that flew it, man. You ever think of that? It could be like an enchanted suit. Yeah, I bet that's what it was. Now, Winston, I don't think it could have been a enchanted suit or something like that, because you remember what we found when we looked on down inside of that there thing? Uh, remember we opened that thing up, and uh, it just a whole bunch of powdery mess up in there. Oh, yeah, man, that's right. And it looked like somebody had been burning incense for like a really long time, man. But it's like the nastiest smelling incense that you could ever buy. Kind of like celestial sandalwood, man. It just sort of smells like pee. So what do y'all think? Is this something y'all might be able to get running? Oh, yeah, I do believe so. Because I found this uh, button on the board there that I pressed, and it uh, got all the lights coming on, and the whole thing kind of humming, strumming, you know. And uh, it started kind of... Firing some engines up, I guess, because it all started a rumbly tumbling. Yeah, it was kind of like being in a volcano. Well, have you ever been in a volcano? Well, yeah. There was this one time in Hawaii, and I was, like, right on the crater's edge, and then, wait, man, that wasn't me. I wonder who it was. Well, we pushed that old astronaut right out of his chair. And Winston got on in where he was at. Then I got in the chair next to him. Well, that there pilot chair just seemed to really take to Winston. Got these old probes come out and stuck him right on up there in the head. I don't think he actually penetrated it, but, uh, you know, it's a little monitor doodaddies that just lay right on up there on top of his hair. And he got this big old smile on his face, kind of like he does when he's about to cut one loose. (laughs) And then that whole panel, it just started lighting up. I tell you what, when those proby things stuck you in the head, did it hurt? Oh no, man, it was kind of like vibrating my scalp. You know, kind of like the magic fingers at a hotel? Yeah, a whole lot like that. Well, it just started lifting up out of that hole that Winston and his buddies dug up out of. Then we flew on up in there, and this little panel flew open to let us see outside, you know. And it just automagically on its own found itself a landing spot about 20 feet from where the dig was at. That's right. Well, that must have been pretty exciting finding a ship that actually worked. Oh, you don't know the half of it. Well, after our new spacecraft settled itself in on its McPherson strut suspension landing legs, we got uh, looking around the ship a bit to see what else we could find. Yeah, man, we found the kitchen and the refrigerator where all the snacks were at, and they were still good, man. We even tried a few. On my bass boat, we calls that the galley. Did you really eat some? And what'd it taste like? Oh, yeah, it was some good stuff there. It was kind of like some beef of my jerky, and, and there was some stuff that kind of looked like uh, rice cracker cake thingies. And I tell you, and you bet into it, it tastes like the best chicken fried steak you ever done had. (laughs) That's right. 
Well, I don't know where they're from, but I sure know some good eating. I bet you didn't let the county extension agent know that you found your new vehicle. Oh, no, uh uh-uh. No, that's ours. That's all ours. We're going to use that as the basis of our new space program and the spaceport that we're building here in Mesquita Springs. Yeah, man. It's going to be out of this world. Yeah, we already got us some land out there, you know, where the old uh, sulfur plant used to be. And uh, we're going to be putting a spaceport right on up in there. That's right. Going to be the Mosquito Springs International. Ooh, wait a minute. The Mosquito Springs Intergalactic Spaceport. There you go. (laughs) Well, man. I really like the sound of that one. Well, the Mosquito Springs Intergalactic Spaceport does have quite a ring to it. I know, right? Now, y'all gonna have to make sure to keep us posted on your progress. Well, we sure will. And we'll even get y'all coming on down in with your cameras and your microphones and stuff like that. And you can visit the spaceship itself. That way you'd have yourself a Mosquito Springs exclusive. <laughs> Ooh, I can hardly wait for that one. Today's episode brought to you by Cindy's Chicken Shack. Get the fried friend special with fried chicken tenders, whole 20-piece fried chicken, and chicken fries with a side of gravy. And don't forget your healthy vegetables. Fried okra, fried pickles, and fried green tomatoes. And don't forget the gravy to dip them in. Or that fried pie. That's Cindy's Chicken Shack, where we always give a pluck. We sure enjoyed having y'all dropping by today. Give us a review if you haven't done so already, and slap that subscribe button so you don't miss any of the strange things going on in Mosquito Springs. See y'all again next time. Mosquito Springs and its town folk were created and performed by Michael Sessoms for your listening pleasure. With music by Ty Simon.